Since 1966, BMW have had a lightweight sporting saloon in the range. It was first called the 2002, but in 1976, it was replaced by the first of the three series cars, and very successful they turned out to be. Now, during their lifetime, the three series evolved into two and four door saloons, into estate cars, and even cabriolets, but they were always based on that compact two door shape with not very much room in the back. Well, now here we are in the new 3 Series car, and it's a very different concept. Designed from the outset as a four-door saloon, it looks like a, a scaled-down 5 Series. It's very slightly higher than the old car, it's slightly wider, but significantly it's four and a half inches longer. Now, not many of those inches have gone into the rear compartment, though. There's only one and a half inches more legroom than there was in the old car. BMW designers have taken advantage of the longer overall length to put the wheels closer to the corners of the car. And that's a classic solution for giving yourself better handling and poise. Also gives them the opportunity to do something rather clever here under the bonnet. They move the engine as far back as they can in the compartment to give themselves better weight distribution. Now, even though this is the four-cylinder engine, even the six-cylinder unit only comes to about here. And that gives them a tremendous amount of space at the front here to play with for crushability. Now, crushability is not at all the same thing as strength. In an accident, a designer is trying to achieve progressive energy absorption to slow the car down safely. So at low speeds, like this minor parking bump, no damage is done. At slightly higher speeds, the two side chassis members are permanently crushed, but all the structural deformation takes place in the end sections, which are relatively cheap and easy to replace. BMW have developed this concept in the 3 Series to give this small car the same energy absorption ability as its larger sister, the 5 Series. As you'd expect for a new BMW, a very slippery shape, flush-fitting glass gives them a CD of 0.29. The high tail helps that aerodynamic effect and also gives them quite a big boot of 15.2 cubic feet. But like all modern cars with this sort of shape, the rear screen comes a long way over the luggage compartment. Now, that's all right when you're slotting lightweight suitcases in and out, but if you've got a big box that must stay upright, you're in major problems trying to get it through this letterbox slot. If the shape of the new car is different, then certainly the feel of it is very different as well. You always had the impression with the old car that the nose was up in the air, the rear suspension was uh, squatting down and you were driving along. This is much more the feeling of a, a civilised little limousine. And that's reflected in the sheer quality of the trim material and the lovely BMW dashboard. This is the 318, and while the engine doesn't have the silky smoothness of the six cylinders in the 2.0-litre and 2.5, it's very refined. It drives through a beautiful five-speed gearbox. There's very little road noise back from the chassis. The handling is very secure in a, a straight line, it's very stable, and the ride on this uh, longer wheelbase is truly excellent. It's always difficult to fully explore a car's handling on the public road. Here at the Shennington Kart Track, there's no such problem. The point is that BMWs have always had a reputation for being somewhat tail-happy, especially in the wet. On a damp, tight cart circuit, we could find out in complete safety whether the new rear suspension, borrowed from the Z1 Coupe, had cured that problem. From our brief examination,